monitoring customer satisfaction and customer first really has been fundamental number one philosophical or practical or operational mm-hmm. focus for me over the career. My first question to you is, what would you say your business and sales ops philosophy is and how has your career impacted this? Um, well, over years, um, uh, sales, uh, my uh, sales ops philosophy and my career has evolved. And I have to say that the sales has grown uh, increasingly complex uh, these days because of the many different routes to market, uh, prolification of uh, digital tools, and uh, and that has uh, really um, impacted and changed my uh, my philosophy how how work with sales. Um, really, I have been assisting sales with uh, defining sales strategy, turning this sales strategy into uh, operations. Um, and uh, helping them to develop and use new technology applications. Um, That also uh, requires planning of right resources uh, to to deliver the uh, right sales results. And so shaping this from um, sales performance, shaping and assisting sales performance to achieve the uh, results has been really my focus and my philosophy in in this role, but I would say to summarize all of this, I need for one and one purpose uh, for um, customer satisfaction because unless you have satisfied customers, you will not generate any results, no matter what technology and what pipeline, whatever you you have. So, uh, monitoring customer satisfaction and customer first really has been uh, fundamental uh, number one. Um, philosophical or practical or operational Mm -hmm. focus for me over the the career. Ah, that's really cool. It's quite interesting because you do like international business and sales ops. So before we started recording, you said you look after like both ends of the the process. So then it makes sense why you have this customer focus to it. Okay. Absolutely. Can you talk to me about metrics? So what metrics do you focus at the core of the revenue function? Yes. Um, and again and again, we start with customer satisfaction. Um, that's number one measure for me. And we measure through uh, mean NPS, net promoter score. And I always focus first and foremost on that. Uh, we will um, always review the customer satisfaction survey. And I will read end to end every single feedback of uh, every customer to make sure that we capture what matters for our customers and we're really focusing on those aspects. That's number one metrics because I think it's a critical element of sales success. Mm-hmm. Uh, after that, um, we are growth oriented uh, company as any other company, I would say. So the revenue evolution uh, over time and compared to budget is uh, the, the um, matrix that I would uh, measure. Also, that leads to uh, another one, which is also critical, uh, because revenue comes from uh, so-called new and get orders, i.e. incremental orders, Mm -hmm. as well as uh, renewal or keep orders. So we will measure uh, order intake in both areas. We need that um, to, to secure revenue growth. Uh, that then leads to the third uh, element that is a uh, pipeline adequacy and mm-hmm. um, pipeline. I would measure a couple of, uh, there are a couple of elements, but critically, um, uh, I want to know that whatever pipeline we have is sufficient to generate orders that is sufficient to generate the revenue growth we need. And a pipeline comes uh, with three attributes. Um, that is um, the pipeline itself. Uh, mm-hmm. And then we look at win rates as well as uh, sales velocity because there is a famous uh, formula that uh, links the uh, these three uh, elements uh, to project your order intake. So that takes your pipeline, it mm-hmm. takes uh, your sales velocity and it takes your um, win rate, historic or projected. It could be uh, if you're planning to increase your wind rate because you put some measures, it could be projected wind rate, but ultimately Mm -hmm. those three elements uh, turn into orders and then orders turn into revenue. 
And those are the metrics I um, focus from revenue growth perspective. So ultimately I measure uh, revenue growth, but for that mm -hmm. I need to know order intake, mm -hmm. whether it's um, uh, new and get, whether it's uh, renewal or keep, and that's uh, linked to the pipeline adequacy. And there I need uh, to measure, uh, or I measure pipeline in general, as well as uh, win rate evolution, as well as uh, sales velocity um, evolution. Brilliant. Okay. So as you're explaining all these metrics, it does sound very like tactical. Could you talk me through how this bridges the operations? So tactical and then strategic divide, because I know that you're quite strategic. You do a lot of planning, but then you also do the tactical execution as well. <laughs> Right. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't call it. Uh, well, it is a divide. Indeed, there is a tactical uh, versus strategic. Um, but I think uh, my function, sales operation function, has that role that uh, builds this bridge over this divide. And uh, this is a very uh, interesting and exciting uh, function to perform. To start with, uh, together when we put together the um, five-year strategic plan for my organization, we were critically involved in um, assessing market um, growth potentials as well as um, our go-to-market strategies for that plan um, in various uh, products or uh, services that we want to be in uh, in the future. So we were heavily involved in defining um, international business strategic plan. Um, once the plan was established, uh, after that, we got involved in establishing what does it mean from the revenue growth uh, perspective and what resources um, we need or we have or we need uh, to achieve those revenue uh, growth uh, potential. So linking uh, the, the revenue and resources topics uh, together. After that, we have built a plan within sales operations. What does it mean in terms of revenue evolution over time? and resource evolution over time. So we expanded that growth um, topic uh, within time frame that the mm -hmm. plan is uh, built for. Then we um, developed the, the plan uh, that um, gives us a view of what kind of order intake we need over time. Mm -hmm. um, what should be the target, uh, target that we need to distribute uh, for each of the, the um, contributing resource. Um, that then leads to establish what kind of pipeline we need to achieve that uh, type of uh, orders um, um, over time. So uh, creating that operational translation of mm -hmm. um, uh, strategic plan in terms of um, uh, orders, pipeline, resources, uh, quotas, uh, I think that um, translation of strategy into operations is exactly what uh, sales operation function performs. And this is what uh, our role is in my organization. Mm, okay, so to you, sales ops is literally about bridging that gap between the strategic Indeed. and practical. Lovely. Yes. Could you talk me through about the, um, you talked about revenue evolution so how far in advance do you do this planning what does that process look like is it like every three months six months nine months mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right uh so first of all as i mentioned our strategic plan covers five years and we establish mm -hmm. five year uh, um, objectives for ourselves and various matrix or various dimensions of this five five year plan um after that we have uh we have annual uh, review or annual cycles that we establish uh, uh, revenue and order budgets annualized mm -hmm. um, but within that annual cycle then we have um, uh, every six months review and update uh, the reason uh, or in general why uh, and how this is uh, done within sales operations uh, this uh, cycles i think is highly linked uh, to type of uh, sales and sales cycle really uh, mm -hmm. lead to the review cycle for us um, uh, in my organization we deal with b2b business mm -hmm. to business uh, sales uh, of a very, very complex uh, type of deals um, and the sales cycle is uh, nine months to one year uh, mm -hmm. on um, on average so doing this um, weekly monthly or uh, uh, on a very frequent uh, basis is not very um, useful because sales cycle is quite, mm. quite 
long. So uh, therefore, we review this on a six month basis. Having said that, I, we look at it a monthly, of course, but we establish targets and we establish um, uh, more formalized uh, reviews and budgets, uh, annualized, and then uh, update this if required and on six months basis. Okay. And as I said, it's largely because of the long sale cycles we, we have. Well, okay. So now that we've got a picture of how often you do this, how do you actually measure success of these metrics that you've tracked? <laughs> Ultimately, uh, we want revenue to grow. <laughs> So mm -hmm. if we've done our job uh, right away, um, it would say uh, you would see in uh, achieving the revenue uh, targets and growing the revenue as we establish in our strategic plan or in, in our annual uh, plans, that would be uh, the ultimate measure of success of the matrix we're looking at. And mm -hmm. if we do that uh, operational um, translation uh, correctly, then we will uh, achieve the results that we are aiming to uh, achieve. That would be ultimate measure. But as I mm -hmm. said at the beginning, uh, there are two additional points that I monitor very, very closely. And as these are ultimately um, um, equal importance for me. That is a customer satisfaction measure as well as employee satisfaction measure that we mm. uh, we have within the company. So um, the achieving revenue targets against uh, our established uh, plans or um, uh, evolution in time, increase in time is uh, really what, uh, what measures success for me as well as um, customer satisfaction and employees satisfaction. Those are critical success measures for me. That's really cool. I um I have heard people say you need to speak to the clients and the customers, but I haven't heard recently anyways, someone mentioning how important it is to speak to the employees as well. What do you think the benefits are there from a like a leadership perspective? Of uh, measuring the employee uh, satisfaction, mm -hmm. I mean, um, I, I do believe that uh, we cannot be successful unless uh, employees are um, happy with the job they do, uh, unless employees um, see the purpose of what they do and uh, they, they um, feel part of this plan. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the plan can be only as successful as the employees delivering the plan. Therefore, the ultimate um, objective of looking at uh, employee uh, uh, satisfaction is uh, really um, preparing grounds for success for the plan that we spoke before. So mm -hmm. that's a very critical component of uh, achieving the plan. Okay, fantastic. So Ika, obviously your tenure is quite long. It's really cool. Could you share any mistakes with the community? <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's it's a most difficult question for me usually to answer, but I'll try and I'll try to, to be honest about it. Um, I think over time what I've learned is um, trading the perfection and uh, uh, and trying to make those uh, KPIs and reports uh, as perfect as possible. Uh, trading that perfection uh, um, for maybe less perfection and quicker. Uh, delivery of the plans, results, dashboards, what, what, whatever that uh, I needed to produce. That trade-off between um, perfection and time, I think, is something that I learned over time, that it's mm -hmm. worth uh, taking a risk of mistake for faster execution, I think, is uh, what I've learned over time. And perhaps if I phrase it in more uh, mistakes, I think this uh, spending more time for perfection is a mistake in my uh, mm -hmm. opinion, because really we make those type of decisions or um, uh, reports or uh, plans that cannot be corrected even if you make a mistake, there's always a chance uh, to correct it. Therefore, it's worth taking the, the risk and doing uh, uh, do things faster. It, that became even more obvious over time mm -hmm. as our life accelerates. Uh, that That is, I think, is a very important learning for me that I would advise for others as well to consider it rather sooner <laughs> than later. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so that's perhaps the best I can, I can share right now. That was a really good one. So um, I think the first answer that you gave, you spoke about how sales ops has evolved over time and the way things work has changed. Do you think 
this like philosophy of just going as a, and then correcting any mistakes is that why you've said that because everything moves so quick and everything has evolved you kind of just need to go 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 a little bit yes um i think yes uh, is uh, yeah. in the past i think we could afford more um more focus on perfection i don't think life right now allows us that uh perfectionist and many in the sales operations because we're so driven by numbers by operations we do have that uh tendency to to uh, drive to perfection mm. um, and i think uh, that uh, luxury uh, is a little bit um, reduced right now uh, with mm -hmm. the speed of uh, business and speed of evolution and i think we need to um, adopt to it and allow the risk of uh, mistakes here and there again the the, the um, experience actually will uh, tell and show where is the, the areas where we can take more risk and where the areas where we cannot take risk. Mm. Um, but largely we deal with things that where we can uh, take risks um, and uh, do it faster. Mm, brilliant. Okay. So last question for you, Ika. If you mm. was in a room full of revenue leaders or sales ops leaders, what's the one burning question that you'd want an answer to? Well, one area that is uh, quite uh, difficult uh, for me right now and my team is the uh, increased uncertainty of uh, uh, business. And let me elaborate this a little bit more. Uh, we used to have contracts and commercial relationship with our clients that were perhaps more um, defined over time. There was a defined uh, revenue commitment, defined volume commitment, defined time commitment term of the contracts. And what we see more and more um, for certain types of uh, business, uh, we, we see more flexibility, more commercial flexibility with our clients where you have less um, commitments, contractual commitments, uh, less commercial uh, commitments. Um, yet we need to be prepared um, for, from resource point of view uh, for any eventuality. Uh, and any type of um, commercial uh, relationship with a customer without um, uh, uh, matching commitment, contractual commitment. And what I would like to understand how this com community deals with this uh, increased flexibility, uh, uh, commercial co flexibility um, that we uh, face now with um, with our clients when it comes to revenue forecasting and resource forecasting, uh, mm -hmm. not having those commitments uh, identified uh, in the contracts uh, that carries um, more risk in our planning. I would be mm -hmm. uh, interested to hear how others are dealing with this particular issue of uh, contractual flexibility um, and reflection of that contractual flexibility in our revenue um, order and resource forecasting that Brilliant. would be my question to the community okay. that's a really good question why do you think um why do you think that it's changed well uh because uh if i may uh give an example in the past mm -hmm. we would have a contract that say this is a your contract uh this is the price of the service uh, this is the uh the, the um term of the service so you knew um more or less for for that client what is your revenue expected revenue over three years mm -hmm. um because usually it would be a three-year contract we still have some of this uh type of contract uh especially in my industry part of um part of the service requires quite heavy capex uh, and uh, there's some uh, some investment uh, required to deliver those services so we do need uh, some commitments but more and more what we see is evolution to where a customer is asking much more flexibility they don't want to commit to a term they want mm. to have flexibility on this connection uh, because the business for them is also uncertain so they are asking also that uncertainty to be a match with service providers, but that creates the whole um, whole area of uh, complexity for sales operations to deal with because we don't know anymore if the service is for three years or is that service for three months. We mm -hmm. don't know if they will be using uh, X amount of consuming X amount of resources uh, because their usage is so much more or they will be consuming uh, 
less uh, resources. So it's not any more um, clearly defined and it's very flexible for a customer to go up or down. So that that's the nature of uh, how our business evolves and uh, mm. I do see it evolves in many other areas as well. As I said at the beginning, I'm in B2B um, area. So that creates extra um, complexity for business mm-hmm. planning for us, revenue planning for us. And I'm quite keen to understand how others are dealing with this, if they feel the same uh, changes and uh, how, what ways they found to deal with increased flexibility that clients are demanding. 